when I was 16, 17. I knew I was going to be famous, but I didn't know I'd be this famous. girls who had come from nothing, you know, one minute we're stood in the dole line together and then the next minute we're stood there collecting Ivan Novella awards and Brit awards and it's like how bizarre is that? I never had a plan B because I didn't want to do anything else, I'd rather do nothing. still do my regular things, so I never let anything stop me. I think people say, oh, but you're home, you can't go out. I think it depends how you how you live your life. I never thought it would be like this, none of us did. Sometimes I think I'm going to wake up and it, and it has all been a dream. But um, usually what I think when I wake up in the morning is, I want a day off. This is the story of my life. This is the story of my day. This is the story of my life. This is the story of my day. When I was about three, I started going to ballet lessons and um, I just always enjoyed performing and my mum's actually a singer, so uh, I've always been around it anyway. I've always wanted to be a pop star all my life, ever since I was like, all the girls take the mickey out of me because I always say that, it sounds really sad, but it's all I've ever wanted to do. This is the story of my life, this is the story of my day, this is the story of my life, this is the story of my day. If there's an argument, I'll never take sides, I'm always in the middle, I can always see both sides of an argument. Through, you know a lot of problems and I didn't feel comfortable with myself and I don't think it was until I like got into my 20s and then I thought I'm gone the way I felt when I was 14 and the way I acted and the way I come across is the way I want to be and so I was right all along You know, I never been one of these kids that was that had everything. You know, they were comfortable, but I wasn't as posh as everybody would like to think. Oh, 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 oh. 
Well, he was in a band called The Sonics. Um, they, they had a record deal and um, they had a few singles out. I suppose that's why I started singing, is because, you know, there was always a lot of music in our house. I was brought up with music. walking around the shops once, imagining that people were like asking for my autograph and things and I'm like, oh, you know, and you practice your signature when you get home and things like that. If I was to go back to school, I probably wouldn't be as well behaved as I was. But I used to do all my homework, you know, pass all my exams, you know, that kind of thing. Never used to stay out particularly late. After school when everybody would hang out doing whatever they were doing, I was off to ballet classes with my ballet tights on and, and all that kind of thing. And when you're at school, you know, people don't look at that and think, oh, you know, she's got an interest, she wants to do something. They just think, oh, that's, that's not the cool thing to do. I was a bit hyperactive as a child, so my mum and dad never really got any rest. You know, like a lot of kids, they used to have posters on the walls and yeah. this and the other. I never really had that. Because I was, I was at dancing class all the time when I was at school and, you know, I was preoccupied all the time. I hope on the fight, yeah. I am the surest bit. I knew I wanted to be in entertainment business, whether it be singing, whether it be dancing, whether it be acting, or just I wanted to do some kind of performance because I love entertaining people. She's told me stories like when she gets on, like she used to get on this certain bus and she used to literally, I was only about seven months, she used to have to pass me to my dad, knowing that surely if my dad's got a baby, they're not going to beat him up. My dad wanted me to get a good education. If I didn't get a good result in my exams, then he'd cut my dancing classes. And I'd be gutted. I'd be going, no, but I want to do dancing. And he'd go, right, the only way you're going to be able to go to dancing class next week is if you get a good result. So I'd be like that. Oh. When I was a kid, I was very hyperactive. Um, I wasn't really naughty, I was cheeky. 
that sort of, you know, I'd pinch somebody and then give them a kiss. <laughs> but I started like ballet and, and jazz really young and I absolutely loved it. It was definitely what I always wanted to perform. I used to say, Mum, I want to do smiles, and I used to make a tape pictures of me and we'll show off. <laughs> I did talk to my mum a lot about everything. You know, she I remember my very early stage she said to me, you know, we won't have any secrets. You can come to me and tell me whatever. You know, me and my mum were like best friends and that is definitely a girl power thing. People say, oh, it must be really jealousy in this competition and stuff. It's completely the opposite. Everybody wanted you to do well. You sort of really learn how to work with people and how to talk to people. Excuse me. Um, where's the cloakroom? I need to get changed. At one point, I couldn't afford it anymore. Like my mum and dad were struggling. I got a bit bullied and stuff, which was quite hard. Time, five nutters decided to get together and go on a big adventure. I love it. Excellent! <laughs> We went round the record company saying, look, we, we're going to be the, we're going to be famous and here's our tip. Listen to this. If you want to be my lover. It was hard because a lot of people were saying to us, girl bands won't work. It was all about boy bands then. Yeah! I love it. Mission to make 1996 the year of girl power. Hi, we're Spice Girls! Spice Girls! Spice Girls! It's Spice Girls! It's Spice Girls! Spice Girls! Spice Girls! Really, really worried. Are people going to want us? You know, going from a four, from a five to a four, and they did. Awesome, awesome, awesome! One of the best concerts I've ever been to. On every notice before you walked in, it was like, <laughs> it's like, do you still want to come in? <laughs> Jerry was not needed. So I think they can handle it by themselves. Yeah, of all the gigs in America, there was something like. Was it 17 people that refunded their tickets? Stadium. That was just yeah. like such a dream to do. Just before we go on, we're all holding hands and we're going, oh my god, 
This is Wembley Stadium. What do you really, 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 really want, Jack? Yeah. Fantastic mother, a bit of a mad one, yes, but a great one. I'd heard a bit about him. I'd heard he was pierced and tattooed and looking really hot, and I thought, woo woo. So I walked in there and I thought, oh, she'll win. He's gorgeous. I think the first thing I said was, mine's sexy, isn't it? And he went, I'm not yours. I thought, like, yeah, you won't be though, are you? <laughs> Are you engaged? Is that right? Yeah. When are you going to get married? I don't know. This year? I don't know. It's not really on kind of. play and then I saw him afterwards um, it's quite embarrassing I didn't know what to say to him what do you say to him on like good game or what you know I don't know anything about football and I asked him out just your smile can chase my blues away I can't help it baby you're so wonderful I'm getting married next summer yeah that's what you know right from when I first got engaged that was when I planned to get married, obviously, because I've been very busy, David's been really busy. You know, we want to arrange it when we can have a honeymoon, you know. And I do hate the fact I've had my wedding around the football season. <laughs> that sounds really sad. <laughs> lucky me, baby. Lucky, lucky me. Oh. Space Girls split up? No! We don't think so. A lot of people have said a lot over the last year, oh, that's the end of the Spice Girls. You know, what are they going to do next? And, you know, people are very, very cynical. I actually phoned up and I said, are you sure she knows it's me? Are you sure she's got the right person? I phoned her up and she's like, oh, yeah, hi, baby. All the hard work was down to Melanie. But we sort of like, you know, had all the credit. So we were like that, yeah, we're yeah, number one. It's like, is. no, you're not Mel B's. No, we're all number no. one. <laughs> Yeah, it is really. But I, you know, I tell you now, you know, we're all branching out, doing things. It's going to be really exciting for the Spice Girls. Right, does anybody know how to deliver a baby? Oh, look at me. So you arrived four weeks early. So I'm sitting there thinking I've just got a bit of food poisoning, you know. Not even daring to go upstairs, just even go, I'm in labour. I'm thinking, oh, I don't pass, just got a bit of bellyache. She is very well, Melanie and the baby, and Jim, they're all absolutely fantastic. Really. No, she's very quiet, actually, she's very good at the moment. Not like a mother. Having a baby keeps your feet on the ground, keeps you very grounded. 
and that is the best way to be. You can still be a bit mad and a bit of a wild child and a bit this, but you've still got to be real. She's very well, she's sat up, she's um, drinking champagne, she's very well. When I was pregnant, you know, you worry, goodness, if, is everything going to be okay with the baby? And then as soon as the baby comes out, God, is the baby breathing? As soon as the baby gets bigger, is this right, is that right? The worry all the time is unbelievable. You give your promise to me and I give mine to you. I need someone beside me in everything I do. It's just strange, you know, to think people are really that interested about what I do. And if people really knew me, I'm sure they'd be really not interested. I'm the most boring person there is. I see your face before me. It was the best day of my life. It was amazing. I loved it. You know, I sat up there on my throne, yes, and I looked out, and everybody there I knew. They were my friends and my family, everybody that I wanted there. All these cynical people that were saying it was over the top, it was tacky, none of them were actually there. You know, so what? I was sat on a throne. Anybody that knows me, that's my personality. It's just me, myself and I. When I woke up on Saturday before the first show in Chelmsford, I was wondering if medically it's possible to die from nervousness. That is how nervous I was. Everybody involved in my album was, um, they believed in it and in me so much. That gave me a lot of confidence. It's just me, myself, and I. I'm so happy right now. It, um, touch wood, everything's going really, really good. I have actually been here. Um, you know, in the early days of the Spice Girls, I was, I, you know, I was underweight, I was obsessively exercising. And I believed that I had to be slim to be a celebrity. I felt like, you know, I wasn't good enough if I was a bit bigger than I should be, or, you know, or my hair wasn't nice, or it wasn't pretty. Do you know what I mean? I didn't feel good enough. I didn't want to live my life like that anymore, and I wanted to get better, and that, you know, I just wanted to live a normal life and be able to go out and eat chips and drink beer and stuff and not worry about it. Yeah, I've put on a bit of weight, but, you know, I, I really don't care now. It's been a great experience, obviously, to sort of go out on my own because it was very nerve wracking. And I was like, can't... I remember saying to the girls, Can't you come with me for the day? You know, <laughs> haven't you got anything to do? Am I coming back? Am I coming back? Do you want me back? A lot of people really expected me to be absolutely hopeless and for me to fall flat on my face. Are we having a good time in Magaloo? The difference is, is that when I'm doing it on my own, you know, it's just what I wanted. I mean, when I was doing the True Steppers, you know, I helped design the costumes, I helped pick the dancers and what they wore, what the video was like, you know, what the stage is like. The whole album's really autobiographical. And I'm the kind of person, what you see is what you get. I'm not afraid of telling it how it is or telling my opinion on my side of the story. So you're going to like it. Go and get it. <laughs> My 
we've all really grown up. And we've gone off and we've done individual things. And so we've all learned all little bits and we can all bring it together and share it. People are always saying we're going to split up, we're going to split up and we're going to be around for a long time. When you're back with the group, it's like you're even more hyped because you've done something by yourself and you've got more to talk about. There's more energy and electricity flying than ever. Being with, you know, a gang of girls, there's never a dull moment, really. There's some horrible moments. <laughs> there's never a dull moment. I think it's perfect the way it's worked out. We're doing our own bits, but for us, Spice Girls is priority. And, you know, the other little things we're doing is great, but we'll always come back to, you know, Spice Girls come first. Ladies and gentlemen, without any further ado, your homegirls, the Spice Girls! We've made history and no-one can take that away from us. Whatever we're doing, we'll have fun. And that's what it's about. She just wanted to move on and do her own thing. To win, it's just off its head. They've got fire in their eyes, hunger in their bellies, and great big shoes on their feet. We always wanted to go out and conquer the world, and we're just pushing it to the boundaries and seeing how far we can go. have that in us. You're still a bit kind of like, are they, aren't they? Are they going to still like me or aren't they going to like me? And I think that's a very nice way to think because if you walk around thinking everyone knows who I am and who I'm so famous, you just go down like that in no time. Yeah.